So I couldn't help myself. I've gone and bought a private entry car from Copar. It's a massive gamble, but the good thing is it was 50% off. Now buying cars from auctions at the best of times can be an absolute massive gamble and a nightmare. So buying a car unseen from a salvage auction when the car's not salvaged probably is the biggest risk that anyone could take. But the problem with me is I'm a risk taker and I like to do all my research beforehand, try and work out the worst case scenario on everything. And usually that is where I set my limit for bidding. And luckily when I bought this car, it actually come a little bit under what I was prepared to pay for it, even if I thought it needed a new engine. So it made me think even more, what has got to be wrong with this car? So let's delve into it and find out. And there we go, there is the C at the end of the lot number, which means it is a private entry car, which means someone has given this to Copart to sell on their behalf. And that nine times out of 10, well, let's be honest, 10 times out of 10 means there's gotta be a big problem with this car, because why would you sell a car for 50% less than what it's worth if there wasn't any problems and you didn't want any comebacks on it? So the big question is, what is wrong with this car? There's got to be something wrong with it. It's unrecorded. It's never been crashed. It runs and drives, apparently. There was a picture of it with the engine running. So there's got to be something wrong with it. Let me know in the comments what you think that is going to be. And obviously, we're going to find out. Let's just jump in and have a look. That's just very filthy. And the main reason I bought this car is not because I'm doing a Skoda Octavia VRS swap at the moment, and I may need some parts off a rs3 engine if it's uh non-repairable so go check out the videos on that guys if you haven't already uh got up to date with that uh no the main reason i bought it is because of its history really it's a a two owner car i think it was a demo so i've done loads of research as you should always do before you buy any car so i think this is a demo and then it went to a customer who had it for uh i believe it was three years and then the owner after that bought it direct from audi and they've had it for the last six years and it has full Audi service history. And this is the most interesting part. It went into Audi to have a service and an MOT just seven miles ago. And I thought that was weird, but also really interesting, which is another reason I wanted to buy it. Not the fact that this car is clearly worth about 16 grand if you go through Auto Trader, and I bought it for eight. Uh, that also helps. So another one of the reasons I bought this car is because I did a car vertical check on it and it came pretty much back as perfect. Now, all you've got to do is put the reg of the car that you're looking to buy into car vertical and it tells you everything about that car's past, whether it's been hidden or disclosed to you. Now, the good thing about this, look, we have three big fat green ticks on it, odometer, financial and damage. There are no problems at all. We scroll down, it's not been wanted for stolen. The mileage is uh, the same as this one, pretty much only about seven out, but we can see it's had a nice steady incline and there's been no discrepancies or no clock by the looks of it scroll down it's got no damage on it as well which is one of the main reasons i bought this car because it should be unrecorded and according to this there has been no damage on it but if we go to an example report we can see this audi r8 here and yeah it's had a pretty bad life it's got three warnings and we scroll down we can see photos of it being involved in a crash and looking at it it's had a front and a rear smash as well. And if we go down, it's not been wanted for theft, but it might have some fake mileage because it looks like the speedo has been rolled back. It went up to 77,000 miles and then back down to 55,000 miles and then back up again. So you need to be really wary of that. And we go down further. It looks like it's got finance on it as well, look. And it's been written off twice in 2017 and 2023. So it's not had a great time. And that is a paramount because if that car has been fixed and you would go to buy it and then you find out all this, it's just not gonna be worth anything after that. So you need to do your checks. Now, if you use my discount code, guys, in the description, I'll put a link, you can get 20% off your next report. So yeah, you've got to be done when you're buying a new car. So a big thanks to Car Vertical for sponsoring today's video. Uh, I think it's an all right spec. It's pretty muck inside. It's got carbon trims, it's got Bose, it's got no pan roof, but other than that, it's a fairly decent car. Now, I believe this engine is actually the CEPA engine, which is based off the Gen 1 RS3, not actually the same engine as I've got in mine. Ooh, Yacht Club de Monaco. This might have been down to Monaco a few times. Uh, it's got genuine rubber mat set. I don't know what's under here. Lock and wheel key, hopefully. Uh, I'll find that in a minute. But it all looks all right, to be fair, as you'd expect from a, a well-looked-after car. And also another indication it's been well-looked-after is the fact that it's got uh, four Pirelli P0s on it, all matching tyres. So it's a good, really good indication tyres of how the car has been looked after in its past. So let's just go <laughs> the engine. 
the engine. Do 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 do. Right, let's be honest. There's going to be something wrong with the engine or the gearbox. Nothing else is worth taking an eight grand hit on. So the question is, do we just go ahead and give it a crank and start it up and see what happens? Obviously, I'm going to check oil level first. It's just weird that it had a service at Audi seven miles ago and now is apparently buggered. So, no, sorry, my apologies. It's done seven miles since it was MOT to Audi and it's done 200 and... 12 miles since it was serviced so still not much so at this point i'll just whip out the dipstick and just check it and weirdly audi have overfilled the oil by about 200 mil so yeah the only thing i can really see is the oil level overfilled by audi by a good 200 mil which isn't great it's quite a bit above max but i don't think it's enough to cause any issues uh, so let's just start it let's see what happens oh battery warning light on who would have thought it's unlike me to have a battery problem What was that noise on startup? That was a weird noise. Oh, I didn't like that. Well, where it runs. Although well, the radio won't turn off. Hmm. Well, it runs. I mean, it's got a horrible tappy noise though. Ah, oh, now it sounds all right. There we go, fixed. End of video. Well, now it's, it sounds all right now, but if I give it a little rev, see what happens. Yeah, it's tappy, isn't it? I don't want to rev it too much. Hmm, all right, let's get the code reader on, I reckon, and see what that says. First, let's see if it makes that noise on startup again, because that was awful, that noise. No, it's gone now. It's just got the tapping noise left. So the good news, as you've just seen, it actually drives as well. So I quickly got in it and drove it into the workshop beats pushing it anyway so the gearbox seems to be okay uh, but after listening to it running and sticking my head near the engine it sounds like it's definitely top end and it sounds like it's more from this side of the engine than this side uh, so it could be timing chain because I believe on these uh, gearbox side I believe um, could be fuel pre uh, pump lobe uh, or it could be hydraulic tappets it definitely sounds top end so the fact that it runs is a plus for me because I just assumed the engine would be knackered um, but it does actually run and drive so I believe so at this point I suspect it's probably going to be hydraulic tappets they seem the most likely definitely top end not bottom end now I'll try and explain what hydraulic tappets do I mean this could all look really silly if it doesn't turn out to be hydraulic tappets so I've made my own diagram because I couldn't find actually any on Google at all so this is an awful diagram. Right, we have our camshaft here, we have our camshaft lobe, so when the engine's running, that rotates, and that lobe always rotates like that. And what it does is, when it gets to here, it pushes down on this roller bearing here, which pushes your valve train down and opens your valves in your cylinder to either let air, air in or out. And over on this right-hand side here, we have our hydraulic lifters, which are actually set in to the cylinder head itself. So the whole purpose of this is they are oil, uh, they are filled with oil until you try and press them down and they squeeze oil out and then let oil back in. But the purpose of this is to always close, keep this gap closed. So uh, back in the day, you used to have to adjust valve clearances um, on cars after they get worn just so they didn't tap. But the, the idea of a hydraulic lifter is that the oil pressure will constantly keep that gap uh, pushed up as high as possible and it will always keep this roller bearing uh, in contact with the camshaft. So it just works a lot better. It prolongs the life of all the components, etc. However, if this piston inside of this little lifter seizes, then there may be a very slight gap. So every time the lobe is coming round, it has to actually hit it first and then go back. So if it was in constant contact, it wouldn't hit it, it would just smoothly press down. But if there's a slight gap, it would hit it first. Now, I believe that's what that noise is that we can hear. 
To replace the tappets is quite a big job. We have to remove the camshafts and to remove the camshafts, we've got to remove the timing chain and to remove the timing chain, we probably need to remove the gearbox. I'm not 100%, I might, might get away with it, but it's quite a big job either way. But for now, what we're gonna do is just remove the rocker cover just to see if we can have a look, see if there's any signs of obvious wear. Right, with the rocker cover off, we can see the hydraulic tappets and they are under here and they just sit inside the cylinder head and there's uh, 20 of them, 10 on each camshaft. Um, I can't see any gaps, uh, best way to show it, I'll show you a picture now, but, and that's what I can, you can see what I mean by the camshaft there and the roller bearing on the tappet and the hydraulic tappet's job is to keep, just to keep that gap constantly at nothing on all of the camshaft lobes. Now I can't see any gaps, can't see anything obvious. Um, I might try and just turn the engine over by hand to see if any gaps appear while I'm turning it over. I don't think they probably will. I mean, this happens at obviously 1000 RPM at minimum. However, I've just plugged in the computer just to see if we've got any fault codes which we have. So we're gonna go through those first as well. But in the meantime, I've always done on this channel, I've always shown you my cock-ups and yeah, I've just made a monumental cock-up and I don't actually know how I'm gonna resolve it. So obviously, you know, I had to take the uh, high pressure fuel pump off to get the rocker cover off and uh, obviously the fuel pipes come off and I plugged my computer in to check the code. So what I did is I uh, turned the ignition on and subsequently, obviously, fuel absolutely catapulted out of this pipe and look at the trajectory. Literally straight down into the turbo. Uh, a good three, four hundred mil of petrol's just gone into my turbo and into the exhaust. So, yeah, that's just great. A complete amateur move. <laughs> but, yeah, I always like to tell you uh, my cock ups because they're funny, at least to you anyway. So I don't know what I'm gonna to have to do there. Maybe just drop the intercooler hose off and hopefully it's gone into there and I can just drain it out. Or if it's in the exhaust, there's gonna be lots of additional explosions when we go and start it up. But looking at the codes, uh, yeah, we do actually have uh, a few. So we have six in the engine control module. So if we just click on them and enter, uh, we've got reduced oil pressure, uh, engine off performance, randall, multiple misfire, cylinder one and five. And the fuel pressure regulator is just because I've, I've just unplugged it, so we'll ignore that. Um, so the ones we want to con concentrate on are, uh, read DTC. So we've got reduced oil pressure switch malfunction. Um, I think we're good with oil pressure because there is oil at the top end, it's all fresh, all good, it doesn't look dry. So I don't think we've got an oil pump problem. And looking at this look, it happened on the 24th of October last year and it only happened once. So I'm fairly confident we can ignore that fault. Uh, however, the main ones are now just cylinder one and cylinder five misfire. And having a look, they happened, uh, yeah, it was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, 69,910 miles, just after the MOT. And they are both the same. Now, I don't know whether, yep, same mileage, fault frequency two. So it's not, ma it's not major, it's not like, in fact, what was the other fault frequency on the other one? Was that two as well? Fault frequency two. So it's not like it's got a constant misfire because if it did, it would be going two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It would do that. Um, so I believe that was just, uh, it just logged it. I mean, could we be looking at possibly a stretched timing chain instead? But then you would you'd have thought that noise would have progressively got worse over a longer period and not just happened all at once. I don't know, maybe when they took it in to be serviced at Audi, they said, oh, by the way, your engine's making a little bit more noise, keep an eye on it, and then they've just got it in their head, and then, I, I don't know, it's, it's quite a difficult one. Um, I don't know if the hydraulic tappets would cause a misfire, though. I don't see why they should.
Okay. So that is interesting. Turning the engine over, we could clearly see there, there are oil coming out some of the tappets, but not all of them. The others that seem to be dribbling out. Now, they're all the same, and all the camshaft lobes are pretty much the same. So you'd have thought that it should all either have oil coming out or none of them have oil coming out. And I think that possibly the misfires were a red herring and it's got to be lifters. I just can't see where else it would be. Now I've come back in from over the weekend and over the weekend I was just thinking about it and something's not quite sitting right with me and I'm just second guessing these hydraulic tappets. And there's two reasons really. One, that the fact that it had an oil change only 200 miles ago is kind of bugging me as well. So something oil related possibly. And the other thing is when I was turning the engine over without it obviously starting, there was no, it wasn't making any noise at all. Now, don't get me wrong. I think I've mentioned it already that the engine is only turning over at a couple of hundred RPM instead of the, the minimum of like 900 that it has at idle, but still it just doesn't seem right. Now we could still have maybe a tench, uh, uh, timing chain problem or a VVT problem if they've got VVT, I think it is uh, on the end there. But I did just have a look at the official uh, repair method for checking the hydraulic tappets and it got a little bit interesting. And that's because it said to check the hydraulic tappets, we need to get the lobes pointing completely upwards so the least amount of pressure is on the hydraulic tappets. And we've got to press down as hard as we can with a screwdriver and a flat bladed screwdriver and then try and stick a feeler gauge in between the roller bearing and the camshaft. And if you can fit a 0.2 of a millimeter feeler gauge in there, then the hydraulic tappet needs to be replaced. So I thought, well, while we've got the rocker cover off, we may as well do that. And you'll see with these little markings here, I have already tested all of them. Uh, I think the last one I've got to test is this, what, these two here, look, the other one, the two I haven't marked. Camshaft lobes are pointing up. So what we need to do now is just press down on the back of the tappets as hard as you can. Probably best off doing this one. Pressing down as hard as you can, using the feeler gauge, which is set at literally 0.2 of a millimeter and try and fit it in. And as you can see, look, it ain't going in. So that one, in theory, should be fine. All the others are fine as well, by the way. And then the last one, again, won't go in. So that means there's no official problem with any of the 20 tappets there. Now I'm gonna put you a picture up now, but the other really interesting thing it says to do is to actually run the engine up to temperature, hold it at 2,500 RPM for a couple of minutes. And if the noise goes away, then it, it specifically tells you to replace the oil filter housing with built-in oil retention valve. Now, that piqued my interest because obviously I just feel like it's an oil related issue. And if there's a retention valve that's telling me to replace if the noise goes away, then I'm, I'm sort of leaning towards that. So I think I'm gonna put it back together. We're gonna run it up, let it get up to temperature, do what it says and see if the noise goes away. Now, really coincidentally, I actually have a new oil filter housing bracket and the correct one as well, because I bought it for the Octava VRS engine. And uh, yeah, you can see, look, there's our valve there. There's one there and there's also another one there. So they maybe suspect that these two valves are leaking and allowing oil to flow back into the sump. That's my guess. So let's put the whole thing back together, fuel pump back on, rocker cover back on, spark plugs and all the wiring, etc. And also I need to address that issue with the fuel going down the intake as well. So I dropped off the front wheel arch liner and just removed the boost pipe. Good job I did. Well, I've just whipped off the boost pipe at the bottom there. You can see, there we go, look. Just so there's no uh, evaporated fuel going into the intake. So now we can just start it up. There we go. I can say. Lack of fuel. I'll tell you what, that didn't make the horrible noise. A load of petrol's coming out though. Ah. There you go, look. Blown all the petrol out the bottom of the intercooler pipe and blown it all onto the ground, look. There we go, there's all my fuel. So, so I'm bloody glad I took off that boost hose because otherwise all that petrol there that's now on the floor would have blown all the way around into the intake 
and I've had a lot of extra fuel going into the uh, combustion chamber. Now the weird thing is, it sounds completely normal now. I'm not going to lie. That sounds fine. So I'm going to leave it just to warm up a little bit and then I'm going to try and rev it a little bit and see what happens. So come back in 10. Now the noise has got a little bit worse again so I'm going to use my uh, stethoscope here and I'm just going to put it above where the hydraulic lifters are on each cam and just see if I can hear any pronounced tapping to see if I can locate where the noise is coming from. So to me, it sounds like it's coming more pronounced from this area here. It doesn't sound timing chain. I can't hear anything here. No, it's definitely coming from here. You know what, sounds like it's actually getting worse. And when I just revved it then, it got, it didn't sound nice at all. So much so that I don't really want to do the test and rev it up to two and a half thousand RPM. It just, it sounds like it's getting worse. So based off that, I think I'm going to go for the replacing of the tappets to start with. Um, and then if it's not that, then I might do the test. But the tappets are just under 300 quid. Um, and let's be honest, it's, it might be a good idea to replace them all anyway. Um, so I think I'm just going to start there and then repeat the test and see what happens. So uh, we'll put it this way, the oil bracket is about 500 quid. So the cheaper thing to try at the minute is the tappets. So that is going to be it for today's video, guys. I'm going to order those parts in and in the next video, we are going to find out, we're going to replace the tappets and find out whether that has fixed it. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at saving underscore salvage as well. And in the next video, guys, there will be an update on the GTR. There will be an update on the GT4 as well uh, because they've just been sat in limbo for too long. So I think I'm just going to do a bit of a garage update and a little bit of work to all of them. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys.